we're Motley Crue, and we do what we do. You have to laugh at yourself. We outlasted everybody. You know, we were here first, and we're the last ones still here. You know, so it's sort of like, oh yeah, those guys started it, and those guys are going to finish it, and that that's that says a lot for the band and our dur you know how durable we are. That was a different band back then, you know. We were, you know, basically just kids. And um, we never thought we were ever going to be, we just wanted to be the biggest band in Hollywood, and that was it. You know, we didn't really think about the, what would the next step would be. It would be, you know, the biggest band in, you know, in Southern California, and then the biggest band in California. And, and we never thought of it that way. We just wanted to go and play the clubs, and, because that's what we were doing anyway. And it just kind of, we just got lucky with the, with the timing with the way that the, the music was at that point, you know, with the punk rock, it was just kind of ending, and we, we kind of filled a void um, for, the, for that genre. We were totally against the grain. No one would sign us, nobody. Uh, they wanted us to cut our hair and, and play like nice little pop songs. And we, you know, we put out our own album. It cost $7,000 to make the album. And uh, we played club gigs to get the money and we, we owed like still four thousand dollars to the club uh, to the recording studio after we only could only get like three thousand dollars left. And we got a manager at the time who worked as a financial backer, and we uh, built two big drum risers and two large amp screens, and everything was oversized and animated. And we'd go into uh, clubs where they were used to having these bands play that would have like a little Fender Princeton and a little tiny bass amp, and they would just stand there and play. We'd go in and trash the place, you know. <laughs> is like the armpit of the world or something. It was just the worst place. We lived in this little tiny place that kind of looked like, like kind of looked like this. <laughs> and um, we could we only made twenty dollars a week. That's all we got. And it came like Christmas time and Thanksgiving and all that stuff. So we never had money to buy a Christmas tree or a, a, a turkey for Thanksgiving. So we'd go down to the store and um, I'd I'd wear a big jacket and Vince and Nikki and Mick would stuff my jacket underneath with turkey pot pies. I mean, we couldn't, even steal, we couldn't even get it together enough to steal a turkey, you know? So we had those little turkey pot pies, and so we're all sitting around, and going, oh, this is great, man. Um, and a Christmas tree, some, some girls bought us a Christmas tree because we couldn't afford one, and we had a beer can on the top for a star, you know, and little panties and stuff just all draped around it to make it look something like a Christmas tree. It was pretty funny cockroaches, TV dinners all over the place. Just a toilet, man, it was wild. We used to have an apartment all together, you know, in the early days. <laughs> some funny photos in there. Some really wild, so we yeah. used to play the whiskey a go-go, and we'd get off stage, we'd walk out the back door, and two places up was our apartment, and the we'd whole audience up for would just drinks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Vince would go, I was never coming for drinks at our house. <laughs> 400 people trashed the place. So there'd be like 500 people in the tiniest little apartment, and everyone's like this, oh, this is great, all right, what a party, all right, this is great. Pretty wild times, man. People got launched through windows. I mean, just, I could go on for hours, you'd run out of tape. That's what kind of gave us our break, because there wasn't very many bands doing what we were doing, you know? And so when we did something, we really stuck out got the attention. We've mixed all different styles, attitudes and looks and, and uh, you know, musical styles and visual styles to, to become something somewhat different. What is it about the band that draws that fear on? Have you ever looked at some of these reviewers? <laughs> <laughs> they don't exactly have groupies, all right? So uh, you might be slightly frustrated out there. <laughs> We're the ones that are getting all the 
you know, the, the bad press and, and bad reviews on the videos and stuff, saying we're sexist. This is Motley Crue. Their albums for Electra Asylum sell millions, and they're one of the top ten grossing concert bands this year. Their albums include songs like Bastard, quote, Out goes the light, in goes my knife. Pull out his life, consider that bastard dead. Live wire, quote, I'll either break her face or take down her legs. Get my ways at will. Go for the throat, never let loose. Going in for the kill. And too young to fall in love. Not a woman, but a whore. I can taste the hate. We're just big kids, and uh, we don't really give a hell what parents and polit politicians and stuff think. You know, we're not going to change our outlook on life and the way that we, you know, play our rock and roll for bunch of politicians and people like that. But the devil may not, well, isn't to us. I mean, we're not religious in the sense of uh, devil worshipers or Christians or Catholics or anything like that. I mean, we're just a rock and roll band, right? Um, devil could be to a 16-year-old girl, uh, her, her mother, or to a 21-year-old guy, could be his boss. We're saying shout at whatever is holding you back from what you want to do. And the American dream for us, we were street kids, and, and the dream for us was to, to be in a rock and roll band and be successful. We've achieved it, and we're saying, go for it. Pentagram. Is that the sign of, I mean, isn't that a symbol that devil worship? No, it wards off werewolves. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah. Woo! Oh. <laughs> That's why I went through with Ozzy, you know, he comes in. It comes in, get away from our booze. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of controversy behind this. And the reason why well, we put it right out here and we said, look at this. There's yeah, a pentagram. But why don't you, why don't you read? Are we telling these, these um, you know, religious fanatics, read this. Shout at the devil. It doesn't say shout with the devil. It's yeah. at the devil. And that's why we put the pentagram right in the front. And a lot of things, if you stand in the middle of it, the, the evil can't get into you, right. so it's actually a good symbol. Yeah. It's really a good luck symbol, and for whatever reason, you know, like the people who we were talking about, the Washington Wives and the, the braiding records, and they didn't really do their homework. I think they kind of embarrassed themselves. <laughs> We're hated, we're hated by the industry for not kissing their ass. At the but time, that's we were, kind of a good thing. I guess we get off on we get off on pissing people off sometimes. Maybe it's maybe it's that that keeps us thriving on, you know, pulling silly stunts and then just being motley. We're hated, we're hated by the industry for not kissing their ass. Kind of a good thing. We had to do something real, real, real visual to get people's attention, so I believe we got their attention. <laughs> <laughs> our attitudes and our, our whole frame <clears throat> of mind comes more from a band like the Sex Pistols, a punk band. We were like punk type of an attitude, you know, I don't give a f what anybody thinks about us. We just do what we want to do. I guess we get off on we get off on pissing people off sometimes. Maybe it's maybe it's that that keeps us thriving on, you know, pulling silly stunts and just being motley. If you can expect something from us, we'll probably not do it. Yeah. <laughs> so we've always been like that. Tommy wants to girls. Ozzy and Kiss were the first two bands that really gave us a shot. Um, Kiss took us out for seven shows on the West Coast and threw us off the tour because we were too rambunctious. And Gene kept telling us, you know, that, that you know, pointing his finger like he likes to, you know, that you, sh you shouldn't do that kind of stuff, which made us want to do it more.
after Vince's, Vince's misfortune, we obviously came together and helped the cat out, you know, and became like closer as, as friends as well as band members. I'd been in a bad car accident, and so had Tommy previous to that, and uh, we were both very drunk when it happened. And then it happened to Vince, who wasn't nearly, you know, this, I mean, it influences us, and we all said, you know, this could have happened to me, or could have happened to Tommy, or Nick, or any of our friends, and it's something that we said, you know, it's time to, like, straighten up about that, you know, about drinking and driving at the same time. You know, drink if you want, great, but don't, don't drive, and so it made us tighter. Nobody has stayed 100% straight. Everybody's kind of fallen off the wagon a couple times, but you know, we're not angels. What's so good about Motley Crue? They're the best. Why? They're, they're, they're the best, completely. The power, the, guys, man. The, power? the power, the music, man. We're all the way behind them. When they're on stage, they're like uh, some kind of god. They're up on stage. They like we aren't on stage. They're. Ten times above us. It just kind of sneaks up on you. You know, I mean, you're, you know, you're playing clubs, and all of a sudden you're headlining on a weekend, and that's a plateau. You know, then you're opening up at a 3,000 seater, and there's another one. Then you're headlining that 3,000 seater. Then you're opening up at a, at a, you know, at a 15,000 seater, and then you get on a tour, and then all of a sudden you're headlining those shows, and then all of a sudden people go, you made it. You know, go, go. Well, wait a second. What? Did, wait a minute. What happened here? Okay, how did I get from here to here? Everyone leaves our show naked. Yeah. <laughs> as long as they print a picture or spell our name right, it doesn't That's matter funny. what they say about us. You're talking to a, a, a couple of guys from a band who gets mm. shitty reviews every single time. So nothing matters to us. I mean, that stuff we go, all right, there's a good picture of us. Yeah. We throw it away. I would never read it. Who cares? <laughs> You learn, and you learn that snorting an eight ball of cocaine before the first song is probably not a good idea. <laughs> Everybody expects you to be this ultimate rock pig, you know, and walk around with a big bottle of Jack, you know, and, and, then, and then like the day you don't feel like drinking, somebody doesn't see you with a bottle of Jack in your hand, all of a sudden you're a wimp, you know, you're like, hey man, I'm hungover, man, my head hurts, I feel like dog shit, you know, and um, so that, it's, yeah, it's a tough job. But uh, it's, it's cool though, man. I wouldn't trade it for the world. We, as drug addicts, stopped growing at a certain point. How long can people um, just drink every day and, and party every single day, I mean, 24 hours a day, and live? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're human, you know? And it's just like... You know, I don't want to die. I mean, I don't think that your fans would want you to die either, because if one of us dies, then there's no more crew. When all of this happened, we started growing again, and everything is exciting, musically and personally, and uh, so you're like a kid again, you know? None of us want to die. We want to keep making records and coming to everybody's town and giving them the best rock show that they've ever seen. And if we continued like we were continuing, it wasn't going to happen. Ten years we've been waiting for this. Ten years. We're at number one. With a bullet. With a bullet. We're like over two million records now. And selling. <laughs> and we're happy.
we like change. Um, and we did a lot of things in the beginning to, to get people's attention, you know, it's big, hey, you know, this is, this, is, this is the crew. Everybody knows who we are, who Motley Crew is, and what we, we represent. And uh, right now we're just, we're just being ourselves, and we're just, uh, just a rock and roll band. We changed a bit, you know, we've, we've wisened up a little bit, and uh, we've pretty much got our, uh, ourselves together, you know, and, um, you know, we're just, we're so tight as a band. I've done the sex, I've done the drugs, I've done the rock and roll lifestyle lyrics. That's where my head was at the time. I mean, I wasn't kidding. And now, like, there's new stuff coming up, you know? No disrespect to Vince. I wish him luck with his thing, and, you know, we'll go on to do ours. Our sound is is uh, very root oriented, right? And it's uh, you know very much from where we come from. You know, it's uh, it's just a. I, I just don't hear any other bands sound like us. Everybody looks the same, and everybody sounds the same. You know, and it's just it's. And there should be like a cutoff point, and okay, everybody has to start sounding and looking different from here on. Basically, as soon as we did something, you know, like with "Shout the Devil," then all of a sudden, like everybody starts doing like the that that type of a look. So then we like completely turn around and do uh, uh, theater of pain. You know, it's like wow. You know, that's like a complete uh, turnaround. And then we go. Then we do the girls goes girls thing. You know, back back when everybody started looking. You know, was, was getting real glam out there. And now it's just like let the music do the talking. I think back on each previous album, and I think of uh, struggle and. That was sort of how the band has always has started. We, we struggled out of Los Angeles to become different, you know? Everything was new wave and um, punk. Punk was great. Uh, we were very influenced by punk, you know, the attitude of punk rock. But um, what we came from was, you know, struggling. And I, th I still feel like we're struggling to do something different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really don't, I don't think we've, uh, we've peaked out yet. I can't remember a lot of the albums. So that's kind of describing it right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, that time was sort of a blur. A lot of two-hammeredness. Yeah. The 1980s have been the best years of my life, in, in a nutshell. I mean, that's 1980 we started, and here we are, almost 10-year anniversary for the crew. And those have been the, the, the rudest and crudest and wildest years of my life, man. And I hope they, uh, I hope, I hope that we're together forever. I've done the sex, I've done the drugs, I've done the rock and roll lifestyle lyrics. That's where my head was at the time. I mean, I wasn't kidding. And now, like, there's new stuff coming up, you know? Conflict within this band. We're like best friends too. That's what's great about this band. Was, this whole band is like tight. Sometimes it gets, you know, we're brothers. It gets real heated, and that's great too, you know, because we always, we always make up. There's a certain chemistry amongst the band that, if we had a different band member, it would be a different band. And to go on as Motley Crue with a different member wouldn't really be Motley Crue. I mean. We've never been faced with that problem. John's like, you know, new blood. We're all, you know, stupidly excited. Somebody was to die or something, you know, someone wanted to leave the band. I don't know, we've always said we'd break up the band. We don't 
you want to be like, like in 10 years down the road, have maybe one person who's in the band for like five days and nobody else is in the band anymore, but still be called Motley Crue, you know, yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. having new lead singer talks quite a few years ago and um, it just all came to a head um, a couple years ago when we were starting to rehearse and write music for this record and um, it was basically a gigantic lack of enthusiasm Vince didn't write anything um, Nikki myself and Mick wrote everything and and we just become frustrated like after all these years of you know telling him what to sing telling him how to sing when to sing when not to sing and it, it just became like you know, we, we were dragging around this extra weight, going, you know what, this isn't this isn't right, you know. We shouldn't be creating this person's parts for him. We should he should feel them and, and sing them naturally and do and and you know we tried to get him to write music. We, we did everything. Um, to, I'm trying to make this short. Um, he came to rehearsal and we had a meeting and, and we and we said, you know, Vince, we're having new lead singer talks again, and uh, he stood up. And said, you know what? We're on TV. I, I know we're on, I know we're on TV. <laughs> but what he said was, I don't want to hear this shit anymore. And he walked out. And we never, we, we didn't fire him. Um, you know, he came to parting of the way. He just got up and walked out, and we haven't spoke to him since. Basically, just a lot of egos going. I think they said a lot of things they didn't, they didn't want to say. And I said some things, and just ended up going, hey, you know, this is this is great. This is split up. No disrespect to Vince. I wish him luck with his thing. And. You know, we'll go on to do ours. I didn't want to be one of those guys that are sitting in a bar going, yeah, I remember when I was in this band, you know, and, and uh, I really needed to get things going. So then I, you know, got new, new, new lawyer, new management, new record deal. And, and that's uh, important. And <laughs> you know, I always got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Other things um, that came with music, like success and money, and you know, um, you know the helicopter flying lessons, um, you know, race car driving, all these things became more important to him than the music. And the other three of us, that's all we did. You know, we eat, live, and breathe music, and he didn't. And we were forced to make a decision, and we had to, we had to continue on. I mean, we're not ready to stop. They, they pretty much stabbed me in the back and tried to screw my life up, and, and it didn't work. At one point you said that if one of the members of the crew left, that you guys would cease being the crew. Without each other, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not crew. What are you going to do, stop? I don't want to stop. transition been it's certainly been like uh, it's like we got a new engine you know um, John's like you know new blood we're all you know, like stupidly excited you know about his voice and what he's added to Motley Crue and um, it's been it's been like a riot man we've had a blast certainly gotten heavier because John plays guitar as well so the the sound's gotten massive, and, and his, his, his aggressive voice style has definitely made it a lot harder. He's one of us. He's very cool.
I still kind of believe that if uh, that record had not the same lineup, the same music, everything's the same, but if it had been called, you know, pick a name, the, the Bag of Worms or something, people would have heard it and said, this is an awesome record, but when they saw the name Motley Crue, put it on, didn't hear Vince's voice, they went, this is a Motley Crue. This is weird. But that doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, it's, it's still a good record. John came to uh, came to lose all of us, or just me and Tommy, and just said, just said, you know what, guys, I can't take it. It's like this is like way too much pressure for me. You guys need to get Vince back. You know, the fans want Vince back. You know, it doesn't matter how good of an album we make, no one's gonna. Accept they're they're not gonna listen to it. I said in the past, I go, absolutely no way. I'd never do it again. It could happen, and I, would, I hope it could happen, but I don't want to get anybody's like, hopes up and say, like, it's going to happen, yeah. because there's a lot of stuff that went on that, you know, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of water under the bridge. Anytime you're... you're uh... Any, any kind of relationship, you know, for a long period of time, you know, you, you have these little, you know, the, the, the toothpaste syndrome, you know, you're squeezing it from the top or the bottom, and little things, you know, little problems come up, and, and we just need a little break away from each other, and, and uh, we just uh, realize that we make great music when we're together. Yeah. And, and the fans let us know, you know, that they wanted us back together. Hearing Vince's voice back in the music, it was just it was insane. It was Aww, awesome. Oh, so you guys are really back. You kissed and made up. Vince's voice is is Motley Crue, you know, and um, it was just it was cool to hear it in the, the music again. You know, it was a growing process. I, I, we grew from it. We learned, and uh, now we're here. Shit magnets. <laughs> Vince was like so into slagging me in the press that oh, it just really. No, here we go. Yeah, he broke my heart. Not only in the press. <laughs> Very disappointed with the way Generation Swine was promoted and, and handled. Maybe there's a way we can get out of doing these other two records, save Electra some money, get our masters, and all walk away happy campers. And our manager made it happen. I mean, there's too many bands that have this situation, if any. There's uh, maybe a couple. Me and the guys in Motley Crue own all the Motley Crue masters. We own everything that ever to do with Motley Crue. It's one of the very rare occasions. Somebody in the band's always in the press for something. Whether marriages, divorces, fights, lawsuits, 
You know, there's always something. I think that kind of keeps you going, too. Because we are the shit magnets. <laughs> there's no bad press ever for, for anybody in rock and roll. In the last few years, um, you can't see it, but I'm wearing a, like a, a clear rubber raincoat, like for a lot of the drama and all that kind of stuff to sort of roll off of me, you know, and I just kind of, I just focus on my music because that's truly what makes me happy, that, you know, that and my, my two sons, you know, mm -hmm. so I've, I've learned to let a lot of things slide, put it that way. <laughs> Are you going out with Heather Locklear? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Heather really helped me through some really funky times, and um, she, she was, she's been there for me when I was having some hard times. Vince has had his crosses to bear, Nikki's had his. It was like my time for like the stupid button to get pressed, you know? Reached like ridiculous levels of, you know, whateverness. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that what I did do was wrong. Grabbing and, and you know, and pushing somebody, there's just nothing cool about that. You know, that's definitely wrong, and I wish I could take that back and wish I didn't handle things in that manner, but I also didn't know what to do when I was being hit in the face. You know, at some point, you like, you don't know what to do, and you only have a couple of seconds to react. I've gone through some, some courses, um, with this anger management program back home in LA and they've sort of taught me how to uh, insert some time bef between the problem and the solution and uh, that's helped. I've, I've actually been put to the test twice now and it's worked. I'm greatly s saddened that my children are going to grow up without their mother and father being married. That, I, that really, that bothers me a lot. Um, doesn't seem to bother Pamela so much, but I'm not in control of her, so. I never thought that this would happen. I thought we'd be together forever. I really did. And for some reason, when I went to jail, I don't know who she's around or who's advising her or what the deal is, but she just did an about face. And it was like, that guy's bad news. You gotta get rid of this, you know? That's what, that's what I felt because I don't know how two people can be absolutely madly in love and it turned to that. I don't get that. My life's really fun. It doesn't suck. <laughs> you know, it's really crazy at times. I wouldn't change a thing actually. Four guys doing their own thing, we get together and musically we uh, click, but individually everybody's doing their own thing. We don't even look like we're supposed to be in the same band together, and I like that, yeah? It's like we're totally different guys, a surfer, lead singer, a gang member drummer, a scuzzy <laughs> guitar player, and a Scuzz. dirty old 
bass player. <laughs> Fil you're filthy, dude. Filthy, you're and I love it. Filthy. That's great. Maybe we just do it. Except for when I was fired. Except for when he quit. <laughs> Except when he got a job racing cars. That's how it yeah, went, that, Yeah, that's right. I, I, for, I, remember, I, I forgot about the press release. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Vince was like so into slagging me in the press that oh, it just really... No, here we go. Yeah, he broke my heart. Not only in the press. <laughs> when, when Vince came back in the band, that, that we realized that the, the chemistry of the band was complete. I think Vince felt it when he was out of Motley Crue. I know we didn't feel it when he was out of Motley Crue. Something happens with his voice, the songwriting, mixed sound. And, and I thought um, with Tommy, you know, too. But it was interesting because Tommy kind of abandoned us to do this, this uh, hip hop thing that he's doing what, a few weeks before the tour. We, we didn't see it coming. We knew he was unhappy and that he was into rap music, but we didn't think that it was like, that that was gonna happen. It's really important for me to just to, to stay moving forward creatively. I think if people really knew the truth about some of the dysfunctions that were were happening in the last several years, they probably wouldn't want me to do that because I'd be unhappy. It, it'd, it'd be like, you know, remarrying in some dysfunctional relationship because that's essentially what it is. You're with the, the guys 24-7. You're basically married, you know. You're eating together, living together, drinking, flying, playing, everything. It's a little dysfunctional for me to step back. Conflict within this band, a lot of dysfunctional, you know, personalities. Um, I can't think about being in this band while it's dysfunctional and having the thought be moving forward. So I have to have an end in sight and to is say... Is it dysfunctional right now? It's, it's always been dysfunctional. Always, always will be. <laughs> Why is that? I mean, it's you know... strong personalities. It's strong personalities. You know, Tommy and Vince don't really like each other. Uh, Vince is a very difficult person. He has a bad drinking problem and it's hard for me to to accept, you know, I'm, I'm uh, in the AA program. You've done some great stuff, you know, and um, if it's over, it's over, it, it, uh, it you know, it's good to look back on the memories, and if it keeps going, then uh, I'm sure a lot of cool stuff ahead. When we're together, and it's working, I've never felt anything as magical. I guess when you uh, quit trying, you quit being pissed off, it feels comfortable, then I guess you're an old fart. When it starts feeling like it isn't spontaneous anymore, then we'll, we'll get out of the business. But just the way that, uh, that the, the way things are going right now, you know, I, I just can't see that happening. I still feel like a little punk, I swear to God. Like, um, and it was so rad, like uh, I got carded to buy smokes the other day, I was like, I, I was so cool. It was so cool. I go. To, I looked at the lady. I go. I love you. There's not an age thing on it, on rock and roll. It's not. There's going to be new bands. There's going to be mid, middle, you know, bands. There's going to be bands that've been around forever that are legendary. It's always going to be new blood coming in. Um, and I think that, that some bands will stick around for as long as they can until they die. Will you guys be one of those bands that die? Yeah. What's rock and roll all about? Just to have a good time, right? And nobody gets out of this thing alive. So let's just all go for it and have a really good time and live fast. And the kids don't have to live fast and die young. I that's mean, our job. That's our job. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, somebody's got to snort it, somebody's got to drink it, somebody's got to go to bed with all these girls. It's a hard life. Back in the 80s, you got to remember it was a whole different time back then. You know, 
you know, it was like everything was freer. Everything was, you know, and we were all younger. So, and more stamina. <laughs> we did what we did, yeah. We okay. did it quite well, too. Do parents still hate you guys? Hope so. Yeah. Mine do. <laughs> 80s to 90s, 90s to the new millennium, and, you know, we'll see what's after that. But you have to keep reinventing yourself. The book, um, I think the book had a lot to do with, because it was on the New York Times bestseller list, it's been, um, you know, touted as being one of the greatest rock and roll books there ever has been, and that was, to me, uh, a big part of people going, wow, this band was more than. We don't want it to be a, a rock and roll movie, we want it to be a story of survival and then it's the backdrop is rock and roll. It just happens to be, it could be athletes, it could be uh, you know, politicians, it could be models, it could be anybody. It just happens that the rise and fall and rise of was in the back with the background of, of rock and roll. Just like uh, you know, anybody who's been together with somebody for you know, 20 something years, you, um, you, you need to get away from people sometimes. And um, but it tends like when we go away from each other, we sometimes stay away. We're brothers, you know, and we're a family. And, and you know, sometimes it takes uh, just a little separation for, for a little period of time to really realize how much you need each other, you know? And um, those, little, uh, those little things that really aggravated you before really don't seem like that big of a deal now, you know? I really don't feel that uh, you know, I, I don't really feel like uh, being in the band anymore, to tell you the truth. So, you know, it's probably it for Motley Crue. In Motley Crue, you know, it's supposed to be everybody has, you know, has a say in something, but all of a sudden you see things and, and you go, what happened, you know, or hear things like that, you know, like, oh, yeah, oh, there's a tour. Well, you know, nobody bothered to tell me about it. So, uh, it's that kind of stuff. Health-wise, you know, time-wise, I would like to be known as one of the greatest rock and roll bands, and I would like to end it on and up. See, maybe Nicky should talk to people before he says statements like that. Yeah, we've done some great stuff, you know, and. Um, if it's over, it's over. It, it, uh, it, you know, it's good to look back on the memories, and if it keeps going, then uh, I'm sure a lot of cool stuff ahead. Everyone needs to be able to show up you know, and, and, and suit up and, and, and do it, you know, and, and yeah. be, in, be in their best physical and mental condition they can be in so that the music that comes out of them is the best that it can be. So that the people that are willing to lay down money to watch a band say goodbye is going to go, they just knocked my dick in the dirt. They were unbelievable, and I will always remember that. Instead of, I went and saw a band that struggled through it. I won't go struggle through it. You know, we've never been about struggling through it. We've always been about giving 150% and I want to go out that way too. It's been a cool message with Motley Crue all along which is about freedom of expression. So whatever it is that we were doing image wise, visual with our show, musically, um, whatever we were going through personally in life, we've always kind of expressed that and I think that uh, we have a, such a uh, relationship with our fans that they can relate to us. All these hardships we've been through, they've been through a lot of the same hardships. And that's, that gets passed on to the younger people who are like, you know, these, these, guys, these guys are sort of like um, legendary for their excess, but also legendary for their um, survival instinct. When we're together and it's working, I've never felt anything as magical.